All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to find all the functions f such that f of x equals f of 2x. All of them? Yes, all of them. And in particular, let's just start with the continuous case. So suppose f is continuous on R. And here's the main observation. If f of x equals f of 2x, then f of x, well, that's f of 2 times x over 2. But f of 2 times anything is f of that thing. So that becomes f of x over 2. But then we can just play the same spiel and we get that this is f of 2 times x over 4 and that's f of x over 4. But then again, so that's f of 2 times x over 8 and that's f of x over 8. So in general you can just continue and you get that this is just for every n, this is f of x over 2 to the n. But here is the thing, so remember f is continuous, the main observation is no matter which fixed x we have, x over 2 to the n goes to 0. So notice, for all x, x over 2 to the n as n goes to infinity goes to 0. In particular, since f is continuous, we can just apply f to this convergence property. Therefore, f continuous. Again, the definition of continuity is if sn goes to s, f of sn goes to f of s. So in particular, we get f of x over 2 to the n goes to uh, f of 0. However, uh, remember f of x over 2 to the n is the same thing as f of x. So the constant sequence f of x as n goes to infinity goes to f of 0 and therefore f is just constant equal to f of 0. So the only functions that satisfy this are the constant functions, at least for continuous functions. Um, sorry, this is 0, and then f is a constant, f of 0. Okay. And in fact, it makes sense, because what is f of 2x? You're just compressing the function. So the only way, let's say for a paper, if you compress it and it's still continuous, it just means it's constant. However, if f is not continuous, then anything can happen. Because notice, we still have this property that uh, f of x equals f of x over 2, maybe like this. So f of x, on the one hand, that's again f of x over 2, that's f of x over 4, and then general f of x over 2 to the n. But remember, our first identity, f of x, is actually f of 2x. But then that's also f of 4x. Da, 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 and also f of 2 to the nx. And in particular, notice that um, f has a constant value on whenever you have x over 2, x over 4, x over 2 to the n and uh, multiplications by powers of 2 to the n. So for instance, an example of a function that's not continuous but that satisfies this is the following function. Take f of x to be 1 if x is some power of 2, again, positive or negative, and 0 otherwise. So what this looks like would be You start, let's say, with 1, and then 2, and then 4, and then uh, what's called uh, 8, dot, dot, dot. And then uh, on the other hand, no, uh, yeah, on the other hand, you also have half, a quarter, 
uh, an eighth, da, da, da. So just a function that is one at one, at two, at four, at eight, but also at one half, one quarter, one eighth, etc., etc., and then zero everywhere else. So that is a, a non-continuous function that actually satisfies the property that f of 2x equals um, f of x. Uh, and the question is now, what is the more general case? Well, for this, we need to have some uh, facts of what equivalence relations. So just define x equivalent to y if and only if um, y, it's some either two times x, four times x, or one half x, whatever. So y equals two to the nx for some m in z. And then the point is, this is an equivalence relation. So x squiggle is an equivalence relation. And to show this, for example, x is equivalent to x by just letting m equal 0. And if y is equ equals 2 to the mx, then x is 2 to the minus my, uh, which is also uh, an integer. So also y is equivalent to x. And you can show transitivity. And what's amazing about this, so on r, What's amazing about the equivalence relations is that they give us a way of subdividing the real numbers or any set really. So you now have a bunch of classes of equivalence um, of numbers that are equivalent to each other. So for instance, as I told you before, so 1, 2, uh, 4, 8, and then also 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth. They're all in the same equivalence class, but then, for instance, another one, let's say 3, 6, and then uh, 3 halves, etc., etc., and 3 quarters and everything. Um, they're in another equivalence class, but then, you know, um, uh, 5 and then 10, etc., or in another equivalence class. So you basically have a bunch of equivalence classes here. And 0 in its, its in own class, so there's no one here with 0. But also negative things, like negative 1, uh, negative 2, etc., they're also in the. Oh. Mm -hmm. But also negative one, negative two, negative four, then are different equivalence class, etc., etc. And the point is that way you're really subdividing R into equivalence classes. And the question is, what is the most general function? Well, on each class, just give a prescribed value, and that gives you a different function. So define f of x to just be any constant you want, let's say c, on the equivalence class of x. And then as long as the constant doesn't depend on the members of your class, you actually get a function. For instance, on this blue class, let c be 2. And then on this red class, you can let c be uh, 1. And it turns out, again, um, by the, um, what's called, um, and it turns out this is well defined because of the fact that f of x equals f of 2x equals dot 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 equals f of 2 to the mx but also uh, m for negative. So the point is, if y is equivalent to x, so if y is 2 to the mx, then f of y equals f of x. So there is no contradiction here if you want. And you can, of course, show that uh, we, ha we do have the property that f of 2x equals f of x, because 2x is equivalent to x. And therefore, we 
hence found really all the functions that way because it's also a necessary condition. All right, I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.